Growing up poor in the region of Sinaloa, Mexico, where cartels run rampant, with no amateur experience, he started his boxing career 89 and 0. Not only is he a Mexican legend, he's a boxing goat. Right now, we take a look at the life and career of Julio Cesar Chavez. It's played one boxing, man. The WBC Super Lightweight Championship, where we present tonight a historic night of boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, over 130,000 fans in attendance, breaking the old record and making this tonight the Grand Slam of Boxing, the largest crowd ever to attend a boxing match. Chavez says I'm going to give Hogan the worst beating of his life. He even went so far as to say when Hogan returns to his hometown, no one will recognize him. He just got, he just got hit. Haugen did by a good straight right hand. There's another one. And it set him back. Down goes Haugen. Second zone. Chavez pouring it out right above us. Oh, brother, a combination. And down goes Haugen. Yes, I'll continue with a minute eight remaining in the fifth. And the problem is there's a minute and ten seconds, and Chavez wants to go home. Hogan has never lost by knockout. This could be the first. Chavez unloading. And it's being stopped by Joe Cortez. It's all over. Well done. Well done, Cortez. Well done. Well, if he wanted to give him a beating, he did. Hogan wants to reconsider the remarks about the Tijuana Texas. Sensational record of 32 knockouts in his 33 straight wins. Introducing and let us welcome Julio Cesar Chavez. Chavez, at the top of the show I mentioned, is the fella 33 and 0 with 32 knockouts. I'm unable to find him ranked in the Ring Magazine, Boxing Illustrated, or by the WBC and WBA, so he must be some kind of fighter with uh, 32 knockouts and 33 fights. Right hand, sneaky right hand, gets through. Chavez really pouring it on here, scoring almost a kill. Some of the sanctioning bodies in boxing will know who you are. His record is now 34 and 0 with 33 knockouts. At age 22, Chavez would get a shot at his first world title. Julio Cesar Chavez. Behind the scene of this world championship go, fighting for the title vacated by the Macho Man Hector Camacho. Chavez battered Martinez over eight rounds. You don't need a commentary on it. All you need is to watch. You can almost hear them bud off of each other's bodies, chins, foreheads, ears. Since that Chavez, uh kid has put in his time, has got uh, quite a few fights under his belt, undefeated, has wanted to break into the world picture a number of times, and here's a chance for him to become world champion. The legs and the heart. It's going to take an awful lot of heart to take the kind of pounding that Chavez can give you. Martinez gutted it out, but in the eighth, the damage to his face was too severe. The fight was stopped. Julio Cesar Chavez was a world champion. A new world 
Boxing Council Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Julio Cesar Chavez. He didn't do much speed and bag work. Instead, he believed in sparring. Ten rounds a day, six days a week. He sparred. Bueno, la verdad, la carrera de boxeador es muy difícil, es sumamente arriesgosa, porque pues es una, una profesión. In Mexico, he was the biggest star alive. Mexicans are rooted in bravery. We are real men. Fighting and honor are in our blood forever. He had already earned the stature of a Mexican folk hero. That act features Julio Chavez considered to be one of the best young fighters in the world, defending his 130-pound title. Name a more iconic duo than Muhammad Ali and Mr. T. But I pity the fool. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Roger Mayweather had a reputation for defeating Mexican fighters. This is his first American network appearance, and most boxing fans, particularly those in the Southwest and California area who have followed Chavez, are excited about uh, seeing him get finally a national forum. Mayweather had the early edge, utilizing his jab to perfection. Is the, the key punt to keep Chavez in a similar ring like he's doing now. Work that left jab and try to get that right hand in. One thing about it, Chavez has a good chin, so they may change things around. Yes, he is. Mayweather took two consecutive right hands. So you found Cesar Chavez. He will be 23 years of age next week on the 12th of July. Jumping up in weight to 135, Chavez took on WBA lightweight champ Edwin Rosario. Julio Cesar Chavez, he is trying to become the third junior lightweight or super featherweight, depending on which division you're talking about, to win the lightweight title. And is the challenger, Julio Cesar Jump there. Great fighters at their original weight who were still great enough when they moved up in weight to be champions. And so is Chavez. The fight would be a showcase for the greatness of Julio Cesar Chavez. Chavez's style has been essentially to wear his opponent down, knock him out in round six through eight. And here we go. Uppercut. That was right on the button. He's fighting his fight. He's taking Edwin Rosario into the ropes and turning his left hook under constantly and catching Rosario to the body. And Chavez pressing Rosario. Good shot. Devastating shot to the body. During the rest period, Chavez looked over here and smiled meaning confidence and uh, things were going his way. Round after round, Chavez pinned Rosario against the ropes and manhandled him. Just so smart. And there's a big combination. That hurt Rosario. It also cut it. And he's in a world of trouble. And it was just merciless as Chavez did what he'd been doing the whole fight, and that is just smother Edwin Rosario. Edwin Rosario, they stop the fight. draw, that's it, he threw the towel in. It's over. And look at Chavez, he looks like he can go out and 
skip rope for 15 rounds. He looks so fresh, like This man is going to be so, so difficult to beat. The dominant performance earned Chavez Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year honors. Mike Tyson brought order to the heavyweight division with a devastating string of knockouts. The year also saw Sugar Ray Leonard stun the boxing world with his comeback upset win over marvelous Marvin Hagler. But neither of those illustrious stars was the man boxing writers chose as Fighter of the Year. That instead was Julio Cesar Chavez. The eyes of most experts tonight are on Julio Cesar Chavez and the question of what kind of champion he'll be in a new higher weight class. Those 11 victories in title bouts, 10 came at the lower weight class of super featherweight. 129 pounds, he moved up to 135 pounds to score his devastating 11th round knockout of Edwin Rosario this past fall. He's a great hero in Mexico, and I think he's very much comparable to what Ray Leonard was in, in his career. He's very personable, he's got a sunny disposition, he's very bright. He was, without question, the pound for pound best. to the end of the round and that's it got a guy running it begins by pounding his body pounding his arms soon you see him catching him on the ropes soon you see him cutting that off and cutting off the corners all the time a full penalty of armamentarium he brings to bear Looking for a place to fall. and pretty soon the other guy is caught and his corner is up on the apron Steele looks at the corner as if to say, do you want in? And they do want in. And Richard Steele stops the fight. And Julio Cesar Chavez runs his record officially to 57 and 0. Julio Cesar Chavez, and the thing that I like so much and why he's considered pound for pound, is that he's a joy in watching his technical skills as how he breaks down a fighter. But it's very hard to make the leap from foreign champion to American star. In recent decades, only Roberto Duran and Alexis Arguello have done so. As you watch Chavez, if you haven't seen him before, note his remarkable ability for ducking and slipping punches inside and then countering to the body and sometimes to the head. There's a left. That, that left landed. And this is what Chavez did to Mayweather in their first fight. He stood him up and he's got him standing still on the rope. Or slightly. Now Chavez lands a left and a right. And the sheer aggression of Julio Cesar Chavez begins to take its hold. Mayweather suddenly is not fighting back anymore. Chavez stepping in now and landing with much more consistency than was the case in the earlier round. They have they stopped, stopped the fight. fight. Crowd response came earlier than ours because we were looking at Chavez. Referee Hank Elisuru talks to Mayweather's corner and it's over. And Jim obviously has a cut, but the cut wasn't giving him a problem. I hate to say it, but I just think he didn't want any more of Chavez. I think you're absolutely right. The position that Mayweather has assumed on this no ha podido descifrar el estilo tremendamente problemático de Pelayito Hernández que cambia de guardia, de pronto está en el perfil zurdo, cuarto round, Pelayito hacia atrás, lo alcanza con jab de izquierda Julio César, la martilla bien su derecha, el campeón del mundo falla, la mandíbula de Julio César, sin embargo es admirable la determinación del campeón, 
que insiste a pesar de todos los pesares que sin embargo entra para abrazar saliendo del embroque en la guardia sur. Insiste Julio con la derecha castiga fuerte. Empieza a inflamarse la boca del Pelayito Hernández y tiene un raspón abajo del ojo izquierdo. Lo alcanza con la derecha Julio. Ahí está la oportunidad. Vuelve a castigar con la derecha. Clava con la izquierda abajo. Vuelve con el castigo al hígado. Queda paralizado el Pelayito. Ya la oportunidad para Julio César que castiga con un tremendo cañonazo derecho a la zona media. Y los contendientes mexicanos cuando Rodolfo El Chango Casanova perdió frente a Sixto Escobar. Mientras tanto, esta es una pelea donde el campeón niguero de Puerto Rico le han dado absolutamente todo. Esta es la primera defensa. Vean la manera como ha quedado ahí. Sammy Fuentes, un hombre que está confundido, un hombre que ha sido castigado de una manera severa. Y aquí le están informando Carlos Padilla que no más, que no puede continuar. Y aquí, señoras y señores. En el pabellón deportivo del Palacio de los Césares, Julio César Chávez está... One that really seemed to affect him the most was when he won his third world title because at that point he became the first Mexican ever in the world to be able to say that he has won three world titles. The, uh, the interesting thing about Julio Cesar Chavez was he is a, a three-time world champion, first won it at 130 pounds, moved up and won two of the versions of the 135 pound lightweight title, an unbelievable record, the best record in boxing today, 61-0 with 50 knockouts. It's perhaps the greatest, most revered athlete in the history of Mexico, Julio Cesar Chavez. The boxing world was still in shock from Mike Tyson's stunning loss to Buster Douglas just one month before. So what next? The boxing world's attention turned to a battle between two undefeated champions. Two great fighters, same weight class, both in their prime. Boy, it had everything. Both are 140-pound champions. Chavez, WBC super lightweight titleist, is regarded by many as the best fighter in the world. It's so appetizing but because Chavez is one of the toughest fighters you'll ever see, and Taylor is given a good chance to end his 10-year winning streak. In front of a raucous crowd, the great Julio Cesar Chavez. The fight would be everything everyone hoped to see one of the longest unbeaten streaks at the beginning of a career in the entire history of the sport. In the early rounds, Taylor jumped out to a fast lead. Customarily, Chavez does not throw a lot of punches in round one. Taylor with a left. Taylor using his hand speed to land a little bit more frequently. Chavez scored with a left hook. He was quicker than Chavez and was outlanding him three to one. He was losing most of the rounds. They were fantastic rounds, but he was losing them. Because he was landing two to one. But at the same time, I saw Julio Cesar Chavez landing these hard punches. But what Chavez was landing on Meldrick, Meldrick had to carry those punches around with him till the end of the fight, like, like luggage. But outscoring Chavez was one thing. Out damaging him was another. And Chavez is throwing over the top of Taylor now, beginning to land with more consistency. As the fight went on, the lead widened. Blood again from the mouth and the nostrils. Both the sides legs. beginning to close. Chavez is coming on. Watch the legs of Taylor. They all seem to be too steady here. Right hand leads doing the damage for Chavez now. A solid left inside. And the crowd begins to heat up as Julio Cesar Chavez turns up the pressure. Right now, the 66-0 record, which was such a landmark in the history of the sport, is in serious jeopardy. Two minutes left. And Julio Cesar Chavez is historic on Beaton Street. He doesn't have a lot left, Larry. You've got to go for this round. When the bell rings, you've got to go throw your punches. Taylor was battered and beaten, but if he could survive one more round, he'd have beaten Julio Cesar Chavez. 101, Meldrick Taylor. I think he's on his way to a unanimous decision. If you're a fight fan, get ready for three minutes of high drama now as a desperate and determined Julio Cesar Chavez tries to take out a fading and battered Meldrick Taylor who has completely dominated him through most of the fight. For Chavez, it was simple. Knock Taylor out or lose the fight. If he 
gets up, he probably wins the fight. I can't believe it. Unbelievable. Richard Steele stopped the fight with two and five seconds to go. Five seconds left. I cannot believe they stopped that fight. The comeback victory sent the crowd into a frenzy. The official time will be 2.58 of the 12th round. He knocked him out with two seconds left. This fight turned Chavez into a heroic, almost legendary figure. The incredible moment elevated Chavez to even higher levels of fame in Mexico. One of the most memorable fights in 30 years of boxing on HBO. Uh, have been very important, uh, but certainly one of those most important was when he won against Taylor in that last round because everyone had him losing that fight. Parades welcomed him home. The streets were lined with fans. Mexicans and Mexican-Americans are the principal supporters of boxing here, and Chavez is the kind of fighter who embodies their spirit and hopes with his aggressive style and his Ray Leonard-like public charm. Seems the WBC super featherweight champion Julio Cesar Chavez was born to fight. The son of a railroad worker is unbeaten. He even had his own gum. Julio Cesar Chavez gum, the gum that knocks you out. Since moving to 140, Chavez hadn't missed a beat. He ran through the division, lifting his undefeated record higher and higher. One of the longest unbeaten streaks at the beginning of a career in the entire history of the sport. From Culiacan, Mexico, the WBC super lightweight and IBF junior welterweight champion of the world, Julio Cesar Chavez. Each match, he showed he still possessed the knockout power to put away a larger men. A straight right hand, the punch that finished Meldrick Taylor. Unless it was a harder punch than he's ever been hit before. He told us he had never been down before. and courage took Kyung Duk on only so far. Chavez's record had made him a marked man. Pursued by every would-be legend seeking to be the first to defeat him. Fourth best streak without a loss in the history of the sport and the other three who ranked ahead of him were all fighters from back around the turn of the century. So in the past 50 years, no professional boxer has begun a career and sustained unbeaten success for as long as has Julio Cesar Chavez. He feels very proud that he has this kind of a record, uh, that he uh, takes it very seriously, that this to him is a tremendous commitment. Outside the ring, Julio has settled his differences with longtime friend and promoter Don King, and their relationship is better than ever. So it's undefeated Julio Cesar Chavez, 75-0, 62 knockouts, out to defend his WBC super lightweight title. Everyone out there has been intimidated by him. My man ain't afraid of Julio Cesar Chavez. We gonna get that ass tonight. Uh, unfortunately for his opponent, he didn't take a beating. He gives a beating, so he hasn't had any ring rust on him at all. He continues to fight. He doesn't let himself get out of shape. Answer to the question, no. Unfortunately for his opponents, he's just as good as he ever was. That the motivation is still very evident for Chavez. Oh, very strong. He's very close to 100 fights. That's what he wants. He wants to get to 100 fights. Ahead of Chavez's 81st fight, Hector Macho Camacho showed up to promote their expected super fight. As Hector Camacho looks on, awaiting Julio Cesar Chavez, September the 12th.
21 and 0, 67 knockouts, his eighth title defense. Macho Camacho made sure to get a few words in. It's a repeat of the Ramirez fight, but this is the ultimate glory for me, because y'all don't want to see the man do it. I am the Michael Jackson of the 90s, yes! There is a rich history between Mexican and Puerto Rican fighters. Hector Macho Camacho, Hector and Julio Cesar Chavez know a thing or two about multiple world titles, both three-time world champions. They're one-two in terms of best active records. So when undefeated Mexican hero Julio Cesar Chavez took on undefeated Puerto Rican legend Hector Macho Camacho, the hype was unreal. And here is the challenger, pacing Hector Macho Camacho, who says he is obsessed and dreamt about this moment for years. Well, the moment has arrived. And now, here is the champion, Julio Cesar Chavez, who finally gets his chance to, in his words, shut Camacho's mouth and quiet him for good. Chavez calls this the most important fight of his career, and the most important in Mexico. Julio Cesar Chavez versus Hector Macho Camacho. Two fighters who were destined to get it on, and now it is finally a reality. To many fight fans, this bout was way overdue. There's the opening bell, and here we go. From the opening bell, Chavez attacked. The problem is Camacho is fighting a purely defensive fight. Camacho looks like a guy that's standing under a cliff waiting for it to fall. Chavez continues to be the aggressor, stalking Camacho. Well, Camacho better hope he can land a little something on him to get his attention because up to now he has done no punching and all grabbing. What a workman is Chavez. Oh! He landed with the right fit, Chavez. Camacho's corner. Look at that Come left on. eye of Camacho. They haven't gotten the mouthpiece in yet. I did not see anyone using an end swell. Yeah, they did. They did, did use they? it, Bob. Yeah. Camacho seemed hopelessly outclassed. It's a no contest, but Chavez, he's just so good. He's just so good. So consistent. Continues to come for. When he did stand and fight, it didn't go well for him. It's the beginning of the end, and that's what's happening. A blistering attack by Chavez. It could be near the end. Camacho went the distance, but the fight was one-sided. Chavez won by unanimous decision. All three in favor of the winner. Five new victims were added to his ring record. Chavez's titles and his unblemished record make him an endangered species in boxing. He's the constant target for up-and-coming contenders. Well, if 130,000 Mexican fans gather and it's not to watch a soccer ball kicked, it must be to watch Julio Cesar Chavez kick butt. 130,000 will be in attendance. The national hero slash god will headline tomorrow's mammoth spectacle. Five champions with four belts at stake. Bouncy has promised the crowd that he'll be inspired and he will hammer Hagen, who's had the audacity to belittle Chavez's 84-0 record. Julio fought 60 Tijuana cab drivers, you know, and I don't feel that he's an 84-0 fighter. I mean, you know, that's a pretty puffed up record. In front of a record-setting audience of 130,000 fans, Chavez would take on world champion Greg Haugen. Down goes Haugen! Haugen has never lost by knockout. This could be the first. Chavez unloading. A super fight with Pernell Whitaker was set. The argument always rages in boxing, and it's as old as the sport itself. Who's the best pound for pound? And I think these are the two names that always get mentioned, and so that's what made it really such an attractive affair. For 12 rounds of boxing. A chance to settle once and for all who was the pound for pound king. The reason is the 
these two guys are just flat out good fighters, Barry, and this, the uh, styles that they have should mesh into a very interesting bout. And you can hear the crowd here at the Alamo Dome, some 70,000 and change. It was an action fight. Sneaky right hand. Both fighters throwing punches in bunches. Chavez doesn't flinch when he gets punched. But Chavez getting infuriated and he runs right in. Most felt Whitaker was ahead as the final bell rang. Again the strap. Oh, the left hand. Chris left hook there by Whitaker that connected. And that's it. That's it. The decision is a majority decision draw. The fans was going to be my judge for this fight tonight. And I think the fans, I think if you take a toll, it would end up 90% Whitaker, 10% Chavez. Well, I think Pernell Whitaker came up with a tremendous performance against Julio Cesar Chavez, and in my mind, won the fight. Not many agreed with Chavez or the judges. They wonder if he is no longer invincible. Still reeling from the Whitaker draw, Chavez took on number one contender, Frankie Randall. Chavez's unbeaten streak looked vulnerable. And this is the champion, Julio Cesar Chavez, getting into his dressing room, his first fight of 1994. He's had 90 since his fabled career began. Frankie, the surgeon Randall. In an age where fighters rarely have three bouts a year, Chavez has been fighting at least one opponent every two months for over 13 years. Entering the 11th, Chavez was ahead on two of the cards. Blood from the bridge of Chavez knows nothing new. Goodbye title, Bobby. He finished the fight, but the knockdown was the difference on the cards. And new champion, Frankie, the surgeon Rando. For the first time in his career, Julio Cesar Chavez had been beaten. It compares with some of the most compelling upsets in sports history, like Buster Douglas over Mike Tyson, the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team. It was the real-life version of Rocky Balboa over Apollo Creed. It was just his first defeat, but it felt like the press had been waiting to pounce on Chavez, questioning if he was washed. First, he wants to congratulate Frankie Randall. Yes. 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 He certainly fought an excellent fight tonight. But there are those who wonder if time is running out on this great champion. He's obviously not the Chavez of five years ago. I only lost one fight, and I was so strongly criticized. All great fighters have lost. Ali lost, Leonard lost, they all lost. Chavez cannot rewrite history, but he might be able to exact revenge against the man who put a blemish on his record. Chavez and Frankie Randall set a rematch. Despite the hype, the fight was a dud. Frankie Randall opened a cut on Chavez's eye with a headbutt. The ref stopped the fight, and Chavez won on points. How interesting is this turn of events now, Bobby? I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know where it's going to go. And wherever it does go, it's going to be controversial. Try to get Frankie Randall out of here as fast as possible. People falling in the path of Frankie Randall. Unbelievable. It wasn't the redemptive fight Chavez was hoping for. But nevertheless, he was the champion again. Champion. Introducing Meldrick Taylor. He has won no less than five of these. Julio Cesar Chavez is the favorite son of Mexico. After the anticlimactic ending to the Randall match, Chavez looked for a fan-pleasing return to form. A chance for Meldrick Taylor to finally erase the haunting memory of his most nightmarish defeat. Taylor came to win by any means, going low, early, and often. Good exchange there. Yeah, Meldrick's getting hammered, but he's taking it. 
Good right hand at the bell, and after the bell, Taylor, look out now, now the bad blood. In his first meeting with Meldrick Taylor, Chavez had narrowly escaped with a 12th round KO. Look at his face. Looks like a cartoon of a guy that's mad. We've got a replay of the first fight. It is a war. Staggered is Taylor. He's run. Damn. A low blow by Taylor. Point Another here. point deducted. Oh. That's the second point in this fight deducted from Melvin Taylor for low blow. Chavez was visibly angry. The two brawled in the next round. Toe to toe in the center of the ring. So here we are, halfway through, and our two unofficial judges call it even to this point. With the cards even in the eighth, it was anybody's fight. Julio's just looking for a spot. He knows when he hits, he hurts now. Now it's a question of addition. How many of these is he going to take? Chavez tattooed Taylor. Going to the head. Down goes Taylor. Bill Slade steps in. It's over. It's over. Julio Cesar Chavez is still the champion. He has won. For about 14 years now, Julio Cesar Chavez has performed at a level unsurpassed by any boxer in the history of the sport. Six world championships in three different weight categories. Despite the illustrious past, the critics feel the future may be in doubt. And you get the feeling that tonight he'll be looking to make a statement to erase any doubt, particularly here in front of his loyal hometown fans. Chavez looked to carry his momentum forward by defending his title against the young up-and-coming contender Vanilla Ice. To the extreme, I rock a mic like a vandal. Light up a stage and wax a chump like a candle. Dance. You're gonna love the haircut when you get a look. There you go. The pink cat. Walker made no bones about his intention to stay away and create space in the ring. Jack O'Halloran. Chavez got to Walker with a body punch, and now Julio trying to finish it up. And Walker wobbles, his legs are gone. In the second round, Chavez stormed forward. And Joe Cortez stops the fight. Chavez had iced Scott Walker for good. As Chavez declined, a new Mexican fighter was emerging, Oscar De La Hoya. Chavez already had 99 prize fights behind him, with a record of 97, 1 and 1. Oscar's first punch opened a cut over Chavez's eye. Meeting and humiliating an aging legend was satisfying to De La Hoya. The fight lasted four rounds before the ref stopped the fight. It was a passing of the baton moment, as De La Hoya was now the unquestioned face of boxing. Well, this was sort of the sad death of a king. Refugio knows how to tie him up. Tony Perez right on the button to separate the two. Nice uppercut, almost drops Rojas. It was a delayed knockdown. The uppercut caught him, and then all of a sudden, it caught up with him, and down he went. You can see it. Right hand on the left hook, dropped him. Referee Tony Perez says, no, you're taking too much punishment. It will be scored in the seventh round. Tomás da Cruz, el brasileiro. 
y cae en manos de la tremenda izquierda de Julio César Chávez que le penetra el hígado y remata con derechas arriba haciendo milagros de equilibrio Tomás da Cruz todavía responde lo acomoda bien Julio César Chávez y le conecta percot con la mano izquierda falla con el gancho pero remata con la derecha a punto de irse a la lona Tomás da Cruz pero en un milagro de equilibrio sigue aguantando ese terrible castigo de dobles ganchos a la manera de Julio César Chávez que cruza con la derecha se doblan las piernas de Tomás da Cruz está recibiendo una verdadera paliza el amazónico ante uno de los mejores campeones del mundo en el momento, Julio César Chávez, que izquierda, abajo, el remate con la derecha, arriba, se va descoyuntado completamente, Tomás da Cruz está en manos de un hombre que es letal con sus puños, interviene el referee, y mientras Tomás da Cruz sale diciendo, pues qué onda, cuántos fueron los que me cayeron encima, aquí celebran la victoria y la retención del cetro de Julio César Chávez. El... de su guardia derecha ha impuesto la ley, pero no se crea usted, estos argentinos son tosudos, estos argentinos son fuertes, y ahí le metió la mano izquierda en forma de gancho a Julio César Chávez, maneja la mano izquierda en forma de gancho a la zona hepática, lo mismo responde Julio, cuando ahí está fallando este argentino, y vaya izquierdazo a la punta de la barba, vuelve a meter la mano derecha y está liquidado, qué manera de ir al frente de Julio César Chávez, primera izquierda, y luego la Larga derecha, aquí aparece el estupendo e internacional Arthur Mercante que dice que no más. Segunda defensa de Julio César Chávez en el Palacio de los Deportes de México. Professional record of 100 victories, 2 defeats, 2 draws, 83 wins coming by way of knockout. The legendary six times world champion, el gran campeón Julio. At one point, he was 89 and 0. 13 years unbeaten. Ultimately retiring with a record of 107 wins and six defeats. Boxing's pound for pound greatest, el gran campeón mexicano, Julio César. Julio Cesar Chavez. Julio Cesar Chavez, a boxing throwback, fighting once every two months for 13 years. A goat. Just play to unbox.